welcome back to Cyber Battle of Emirates. I will try to show you one quick walkthrough on a task called Rootkit. I have already downloaded on my Kali machine. I will give some tips and tricks. I will not show you the hints because I don't want to spoil the fun, but I hope you maybe can learn something new or if you had the chance to solve this task and you use different tactics, it's like really cool because there's no like one straight way how to solve these kind of tasks. So you can always use different tools, different approaches, and basically different tactics to, to solve these CTFs. So I will minimize my camera and I will try to go over this task. So we have this rootkit.so that we can download from the link provided in the task description. Uh, the idea behind the task is that uh, there was a system that was compromised and malicious users, actors were able to basically gain access over and over again uh, by, by using this rootkit. And your task basically is to find a source port that was like hard coded and you can access this source port and gain like direct root access on the system. Uh, if you have explored uh, root kits a little more on the GitHub from different kind of like uh, source code examples, etc., you already know some, some basics, but we can go over all of the things again. And the first thing what I usually like to do is run file command on, the, uh, on our file. And basically we can see on what kind of uh, system this was compiled. We can see that this is shared object and we can see it's dynamically linked object as well. Uh, another thing always I like to run strings on the rootkit as well. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can already try to see some interesting function calls. We have something called falsify TCP. We have some Fopen64, we have read there. I already know more or less what these things are doing. And if you Google a little bit around, uh, you will have a bit clearer picture as well. Uh, so we have some accept hooking in a place. Uh, then we can see this code of block is pretty interesting. Uh, okay, we have some read their function call. Then we have some bucket Z. Uh, I will just copy paste this one. Uh, then we have some accept call. We have some K worker. I have seen similar uh, process names within Linux distributions as well. Uh, so we have one call to be in a sage shell. We have some EA60. If we decode this value from the hex, it should be like um, 6000. Uh, Next two calls we have for Fopen and PropNet TCP. Uh, this should be fairly easy to understand because what is happening, we are probably trying to falsify that TCP port by basically excluding it from output. So we shouldn't be able to see port uh, 60,000 uh, with some common tools. It will be just like excluded so malicious users maybe can use it to you know hide some network traffic or or spy on some reverse shells etc uh what is interesting about this one this bucket with z i can see what is happening and this function is usually called when uh, you are trying to deal with uh, uh, some commands that basically lists files and folders so to give you one quick example let's step back a little bit uh, if we run ls, uh, let's create this folder. If we run ls again, we can see our folder here. Uh, we can actually check if our rootkit is preloaded in ls binary. To do so, uh, we have to run uh, user bin ls with ldd command in front of it. Uh, we can see that our rootkit is not uh, preloaded yet, but one quick way how to do it is we can edit etc ld so preload file, and we have to provide full path where our um, rootkit is uh, located. So rootkit.so, let's save this one, and let's run this command again. 
oh, sorry, not this one, this one. And this time from the output, actually, we can see that uh, the rootkit is actually preloaded. And the fun part, if we run the command ls, we can see only rootkit file. But we did create a folder, this bucket with n and z. So even if we do ls lat, uh, we will not see the bucket z folder. But actually, we can uh, we can go inside this folder. It's just invisible. So this is one part of this rootkit, uh, some like functionality part uh, that malicious users can can use. Basically, trying to fi uh, hide some files and folders uh, from the from the user on the system. So let's go back. Uh, I will remove this uh, buckets directory. Um, I will exclude uh, my preload hook from uh, from configuration, and I will do again user bin ls just to see if it's still preloaded or not. Okay, it seems uh, it seems clean, and now I want to continue with the actual task where we have to find the specific source port. So we can we can use different approaches. We can use different debuggers. Uh, it's totally up to a player to pick up the best for for themselves. So I like to use GDB. Uh, another tool that could be pretty useful for this one would be ObjDump, uh, like short for object dump. And um, it's yeah, it's again, it's totally up to you what you want to use. Uh, but I will go with the GDB, so I will specify my file, what I want for debugger, I will run it, I will run again info functions, I will list all the functions that we can found, we can see we have, uh, we have these uh, non-debugging symbols included, let's hit enter, uh, we can see the same falsify TCP, uh, we can see some substring, something is searching for some substrings in a string that is usually quite sketchy and we have some accept hooking as well let's try to disassemble this falsify tcb for a second and um, see what's inside there we can see some instructions now uh, i will go hit enter here we can see a substring function uh, that is basically checking if some specific string is uh, inside a substring and after that we are having a test comparison uh, with the variables uh, with the registers so this is quite interesting and from the from the logic I can already tell that uh, we're probably looking for this one specific port uh, that was described in a that we show uh, so in the strings. Uh, let's go back a little bit and try to disassemble another function. We have H tons, that's pretty interesting. Uh, but let's try to disassemble this accept. accept. Let's see what's happening here. So again, we have some instructions, we have some registers in place. Uh, and I already see um, we have some H tons over here. Then we have some comparison as well. And since I've been involved a little bit in like developing this um, rootkit, I'm pretty sure what I need to look for. Uh, I can show you one quick example in Stack Overflow. Basically, what is H tons is doing? It's basically getting input a port number and passing it forward, uh, doing some manipulation with it. But uh, this is the right place where we need to check for, for our CTF solution. And if we do one step for farther, we can see that actually the correct value uh, that this H tones is receiving is this one. And we can basically do a quick, uh, quick reversing from hex to decimal. And if we do for E09, we should receive for E09, we 
should receive the correct port number that's used for these malicious users. Uh, there are different kind of approaches how you could get this number uh, back uh, as well, but this was the like the simplest way how I did it and I would do it. If you would run object dump on this rootkit, it will probably print you out the same value so it's not very difficult to understand and uh, figure out the source port but you have to know what uh, what these htons functions accept calls they are what they are doing so it would be pretty helpful if you google around for them if you are dealing with reversing and figuring out malware for the first time it can be quite complex and uh, and yeah but google is always your friend and regarding this task if you submit the port number uh, that was described here uh, from the hex value, this should be your correct flag to solve the task and score the points. If you have any other tasks, I would really like some Q&A session. We have open channels for this one. So I'm open for the questions on this task or other tasks. So good luck, guys, and uh, good luck on solving other tasks in this CTF.